What's up guys, Dan Russell here. I'm a senior software engineer here in Los Angeles and I love my job. Now, a few weeks ago, I made a video about how I transitioned my career from knowing no code at all to being a full-time software engineer in less than one year with a six-figure salary. So I wanted to make this video today to share with you my story about how I even got the idea to go into software engineering in the first place. This video is really meant to be a heart to heart with all of you out there that are looking to make a huge career transition for yourself and don't know where to start. Whether you're stuck in a low paying job or a job that you hate, or you're completely lost and you don't know what to do next, I hope that this video can give you some inspiration. I was in your same position three years ago and I know how confusing and depressing this whole thing can be. Now, if you haven't already, please smash that like button. It really helps with YouTube's algorithm. I really appreciate it. And without further ado, let's get into my story. All right, so after I got out of college, I got a job as a Macy's sales manager through their executive development program. I got this job through UC Santa Barbara's career services, and this job was really grueling. I worked there for about one year, and it basically consisted of me managing anywhere from three to five different departments in Macy's, being responsible from 30 to 50 different employees at a time, all their emotions, and the emotions of the customers. On top of all that, I had to clean up boxes in a three-piece suit. So that with the odd schedule really got me into a place where I felt really low, hopeless, and depressed with life. This job just wore me down and I ended up quitting because it felt like a prison to me and I didn't have any energy and my free, free time to pursue anything else. So I moved back in with my parents and I was completely embarrassed and ashamed. So at this point, I didn't really have many options. I didn't know where to go. So I kind of had to rely on my parents' conventional wisdom to follow your dreams or do what you love. And I did. I started making music in my parents' attic. I started auditioning for plays because I remember I used to act in college and high school and I really liked doing musical theater. So I figured music was kind of a way to, for me to sing and to kind of practice that musical part of myself. And also um, auditioning for plays hopefully would give me some community. But after doing this for about a year, I found out that there was a lot of downsides. A lot of the times I was alone. These auditions were just as grueling as going and performing at Macy's every day. And I was starting to get worn down again and I wasn't getting any money this time. And the worst part about it, aside from not making any money, was that I could only blame myself for my lack of success in these fields because there was no one that I was working for and no one to hold me back. It was just me sitting by myself wondering why I can't make any money. At this point, I started to get really jaded with the whole follow your dreams mindset and pursuing a creative career, doing something that I thought that I loved. So I looked around and I saw that my brother was making a lot of money as a quality assurance analyst, a job that I thought was really boring and um, didn't have much future in it. But he was happy, he was making a lot of money, and that really started to get me thinking in constructive ways on how I could change my current situation. So I started to get realistic with myself and write down things that were non-job related that I really wanted to achieve in my life even if they were silly or petty. And doing this exercise really forced me to be honest with myself. I found out that what I really wanted was just a comfortable living wage so that I could move out of my parents' house and support my girlfriend. I also was tired of going out with friends and not being able to afford a coffee or an extra beer if I wanted to. I felt kind of embarrassed that I didn't have any money and my friends did, and that kind of social pressure would be really nice if I didn't have it. I also knew that I wanted a house here in Los Angeles and the prices for homes even back then were ridiculous. Now they've even risen even more. So I knew that I had to get my button gear and get a job that paid really well. So I did my research and a comfortable living wage here in Los Angeles is at least $100,000 per year. By coincidence at this same time, I had a really good friend that recommended me this book so Good They Can't Ignore You by Cal Newport. I'll link that in the description below. That really challenged my mindset on the whole you should do what you love for a living kind of mindset. In the book, Cal Newport argues that you end up loving whatever you become good at. And in order to get good at something, you need to get dedicate most of your waking hours 
to doing whatever it is. And once you get good at that, that's when you start getting this feedback loop that tells you, oh, I'm making an impact or I'm providing value for other people. And that is right there is the key to loving whatever that you do. I read between the lines and I started thinking about why some jobs pay more than others. And I realized it's because these jobs fulfill roles that provide more value to more people than others. So if a job is high paying, that usually implies that it's a high impact job that people are willing to spend more of some of their most valuable resource on this planet, which is money. So instead of just choosing a job that you'll love, try researching jobs that pay the most, AKA make the most impact, and then spend most of your time getting better at the skills necessary to get good at that role. So what this looked like for me is I researched the top paying jobs that I could find on Google and I found that the top paying jobs usually involved something like being a doctor, a lawyer, an investment banker, or a software engineer. Now being a doctor or a lawyer required me to go back to school for many more years and spend a lot more money. So that was out from the get go. And investment banking seemed a little more like Macy's to me. I didn't like that you had to wear a suit. Um, it, again, this is kind of like one of those petty things that I decided, decided was important to me, but I didn't want to wear a suit to the job. So I found that software engineering seemed the most appealing to all of these because I didn't have to go back to school to get a computer science degree. At least I found that out in my research and I could wear whatever I wanted to work as long as I looked you know, presentable. So yeah, I thought you needed a degree in computer science to become a software engineer. But the more research I did, the more I found out that you can just teach yourself this stuff online via teamtreehouse.com, lynda.com, LinkedIn Learning, or you can also go to a boot camp like Hack Reactor or Galvanize or Full Stack Academy or, you know, there's, there's plenty. You can just research what boot camps are around you. So I figured, well, I'll get good at whatever I spend the most of my waking hours doing. So I'll just go from coffee shop to coffee shop and just spend all of my like eight plus hours a day learning how to code. Now, if you want to hear my full journey from that point onward, I made a video about that a few weeks ago called the fastest way to become a software developer 2019, where I go through all of my process of starting to learn online to going to the boot camp and that experience, and then also what my experience was like interviewing for these tech jobs. All right, you guys, thanks for sticking with me till the end. This was my story about how I got in the right mindset to start pursuing software engineering. I hope that this video gave you some comfort and some inspiration to make a huge career transition yourself. If you made it this far, I wanna thank you from the bottom of my heart. If you haven't already, please hit that subscribe button and turn on the notification bell if you wanna see more videos like this. Also, as always, leave a comment down below and tell me where you're at with your career transition. I read and respond to every one of these comments and I also have a wonderful community of followers who can maybe help as well. Thanks again and I'll see you in the next video.